Hi again and welcome back. I'm Jody. I'm a Linux guy, Python guy, Rust guy. Okay, I'm 45 years old, so I have done a lot and enjoyed them. Not a professional in anything, but sharing with you what I know. I'm also into playing CTF games and Capture the Flag. This is a pl game that hackers play. Uh, I was playing this Access Denied CTF 2022. Nice challenges and at least the beginner ones are beginner level which is logical so i've thought it's good to share with you a couple of them i recorded one and this is the second one from the misc uh we are 36 we should be much better but still we have not played much still one day uh time remains I wanted to show you how to play this one, Shark 1. 100 solves, so should be an easy one. Nobody likes traffic, but what about network traffic? No clue, it just says it's about a network, at least no obvious clue. And there is one PCAP, okay, NG new generation file. This is a Wireshark network sniffing data. You can sniff network, save all the packets or some of the packets based on your logic, uh, filter, better word, and then analyze it in different programs. I have a video which I do this analysis, more advanced challenge. I do it in Python. But here, because 100 people have solved it and this is the easiest challenge in the network packet uh, sniffing, we should be good with Wireshark. But let's see how it should be done. If you are too new to CTF, I highly recommend playing it. Uh, you should go to CTF time. I have it open here. Create a team. Just find the next challenges. Enroll in them. If Even if you are the only player in your team, play some challenges. Spend one day thinking about it, trying. You can. There are different parts. Most of the challenges do have different parts. There's your part, this style. You can uh, try programming, network attacks, web server attacks, web interface attacks, pounding, uh, decrypting the encryptions, reverse engineering stuff, and all. I already recorded one cool reverse engineering. Very easy one just to show you that you can start. In any level, I believe you can start and even start learning here. It happens also for me. It's a place to enjoy, entertain yourself, and learn new stuff. In many cases, you see some challenges, you stuck and you go study something new, enjoy and learn. Let's do this one, Shark1 one, PCAP. I have already downloaded this file, so we'll do open. Uh, Okay, I will open them in Wireshark. Wireshark is a nice tool, a front-end GUI to Wireshark. You can get these dump files using TCP dump, or even on the Wireshark, you can record your computer's activity and see the packets. Highly recommended if you want to learn something. This is one of the areas I really, really enjoyed playing because you can have a more understanding of how computers talk with each other. You can understand better and deeper about different protocols and everything. When I want to start a challenge like this, the first thing is doing a quick browse here. See, we have very, very, very few packets, only 92 different packets. So it shouldn't be that difficult and the data cannot be super hidden somewhere. Sometimes you have thousands and thousands of packets and each packet sometimes sends one of the data and you have to do a lot of uh, work to find it. I have one video about that kind of challenges. Search for Wireshark Jody. But here we have uh, no more than 100 packets, so it should be easy. The next thing I do, I uh, check what protocols do we have. We have some ARP, computers are trying to reach each other, find each other. Then we have DHCP, then we have DNS. All of these are initiating the connections. IGMP, which is ping, MDNS, kind of same DNS. And then we have a 
very, very, very few TCPs, which transport data between computers, most probably. I will go with time again. Uh, so I have those connections first on TCP dump. You will see the packet list here. If you select one of the packets, for example, this one, it directly says, give me the X or key. Maybe from the previous video, you know why X or is important in cryptography, because we do A, X or B, and it gives us C. We transmit C to someone, and if someone X or C with the B, B is the key, it will give her A. So you can get back your data. On the very, very, very basic cryptographies, it's very common to X or your string with some characters and transmit it. On the other side, if the other person uses the same sequence of characters, maybe just one character, and uh, X or the same message, they will get back the original message. We call this uh, ciphertext. Anyway, and the key. So on the TCP dump, you can select any of these and it will show you the inside of it. It says this is the frame, this is the IP protocol. So this is going from this address to this address, from the same computer to the same computer. They were just generating some data. TCP protocol and the data inside it. This is the data inside it. This is in hex. So the ASCII equivalent will be give me the X or key. So there should be answer just below it. This is the ACK package. They're just negotiating. And here, this is the data. It says X or key is 80. Uh, same, you have the IP protocol here. You have the TCP protocol here. You have a malformed packet here, but there are some data which we can use. So, again, if you go here, it will show you that 78 in hex will be X, 20 will be this space, and then every character, and here it shows you the ASCII representation, so you can see it. Here, for example, uh, 20 in hex is 32 in decimal, which is the space key, which we show it like this because we cannot show it like nothing. Some people show it like this. Anyway, so we found a communication between two computers happening on one computer. I can say from the IP level that this computer is talking with this computer, but the key is 80 in hex. So. And then the next message, we don't have anything. Then again, some connections. After some time, another TCP connection. And it says, here is the flag. And it's transmitting the flag, most probably in XORD with the key. So we need this. If I go here, I have the data. This is in hex. So I will copy this value. Now I have a hex value which is 48, 65, 72, and I know that 48 in hex is capital H. So it says here is the key I can say from here. And this is the key. This should be the key. And then I have an X or key, which is, I have a, yes, X or key, which is 80, most probably 80 in hex. So let's go and decode this. We'll have a quick look to the next ones. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Because sometimes they just create what some people call red herring, if I'm right. Uh, there might be a key here. You enter it a thousand times. It doesn't work. You get mad. And if you go back to the uh, TCP, you will see that the next packet says, Oh, sorry, that was the wrong key. Use this one. This is updated. But there is not a, such a thing here. So we go back to our browser. There is a co tool cool which is called Cyber Chef. Cyber Chef is super useful in doing these conversions. It's an online tool, so you don't need to program a small Python script to read the bytes from the hex, convert them, whatever. 
this is the input I have. I know that I want to convert this from hex. So I will search for from hex. Or if you don't know what you have, you can just go to the here, che uh, check, for example, data formats and say, OK, I want convert from hex. It says, OK, if you convert, see, this is a cyber chef. This is your recipe. So this is your input. This is your output. So if you have this input and your recipe says from hex, it says, OK, from hex, 48 is H, 65 is E. Ah, OK, capital H and uh, lowercase e and blah, 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 blah. This is your flag. This is the flag. But if you have done this enough, as soon as you see something like this, you found out, OK, this is base something, most probably base 64. Base 64 is a technique to convert binary characters to human readable characters. So, for example, if you have an A here, you will have an A, I believe. But if you have some strange binary character here, it may convert it to, for example, 4E. Not a direct one. This is not a very good example. I will try to record one video and write this manually so you will understand deeply what base64 is. But in general, remember that base64 is converting none all the characters, whatever character you give it, to some human readable and normal transmittable characters. I can guess this to be a base64 because it has this in the end. If you don't have enough bytes, something like this will be added. Even if we didn't have this, not being lucky and having this, I would guess from that all the characters are human readable and this is not something that can be XORed easily. So we will try different bases. I say from base 64, but there is a problem. Let me copy it. See, it doesn't work properly. Why? Because the input is not all base 64, only this part. So I have to remove this. Base64 doesn't understand that. I'm very, very fast in this because I have done this several times in different uh, CTFs. But now you're learning it. Don't be confused and don't think you have to do the same thing. Sometimes we spend hours in this cyber chef trying to decode something to something else. If I remove this 48, this H will be removed. If I remove this, the next one will be removed. So I will remove enough and we are here. If I remove only one character, this will be broken. Why? Because every two, every pair creates one character here. So one breaks it, the next one will remove the next character. So F, L, A, G, and colon. And we have one space here. Now we have a, a base 64. I will disable this. This is the output of base 64. This is what I'm looking for. A good I will see that we are finding it. This is looks like because this is a access denied challenge. And somewhere in the documents or in the chat, they say that, OK, our flag format is access denied something here. When looking to this, I can see that these two are the same. These two are the same. This A with something and this A with something are should be maybe two or three characters apart. There are different kinds of A. A and C are only two characters apart. So this is something I'm looking for. If I X or each character with the key I had, I should get the answer. Let's try it. Still, CyberChef helps us. I can say, OK, next step on the recipe, have a XOR. It says, OK, XOR with something. XOR with what? My key is 80. And this is your answer. Access denied, Wireshark, best for packet sniffing. Agree. So this is my key. If I go here and say, I found the key. It says, flag submitted successfully. Good, now we can go to shark two. I'm not sure if I will have time at the moment, but no problems. See you later, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget, CTF is not for being the first team in the world. The CTF, do not, you don't need to trick the site, brute force the answer, ask from others. 
You need to see, okay, I can learn this now. One of the challenges, and always you will learn new things. If you are not learning new things, you are the champion of the world. And one of the challenges, a couple of challenges before, for example, we had a wire shark of a communication between keyboard and the computer. I never knew how a USB keyboard works, but we had this uh, eavesdropping, if I'm right. So I was able to understand, I had to go and understand how USB keyboard says data, data so I would, you know what I want to say, sorry for bad English. Please subscribe, I will be super happy and I'm enjoying this. Tell your friends, bye. And don't forget, enroll in one of the challenges in CTF time and play with your friends in your university, in your high school, in your circle of friends, create a team, ch check the challenges. When the challenges are done, search for write-ups for challenges and you will learn lots and lots and you will become a good hacker soon. Enjoy.